Welcome to Q Youth Foundation's Eastside Queer Stories Festival Radio Plays. The following is intended only for mature audiences. Running from Myself by Sydney Rogers. to romanticize the idea of running. James Bond running from the bad guys, Buffy staking the vampires, Charlie's angels and their chase scenes looking gorgeous. I thought of that running as something good. One of my first memories of running is with my mom when I was 10 years old. She had just been kicked down the stairs for the third time that week. Hello? Is this yellow taxi cab? I need to order one. As I pushed my brother's and sister's clothes into these bags as fast as my little ten-year-old hands could go, I heard my mother say, Bring the biggest taxi you can find. I thought he might come back at any moment. You think he might be back soon? You know he pays special attention to me at night sometimes? I don't know. But we are getting us away from this crazy motherfucker for good. When the opportunity for us to get the hell out of there came, my mother took it. We later found out that he trashed that house big time when he saw that we had left. Best decision my mother ever made. (laughs) There comes a time when we have to stop running, but it is what I had been taught to do. (laughs) We like when you run home like a little pug. (laughs) I had these bullies when I was a kid. What Femi kid didn't, right? But I had three. That's right. I got three of those fuckers in one year. They all knew each other, and they loved to chase me home from school. Terry was the skinny one. Buck teeth, and I told him so. I wasn't afraid of him as much as the others. He was the one that laughed at what the others told him to laugh at. And I think about it now. He may have joined in because he was scared that they would do the same to him. Run home to your mama! Shut up, Terry! Damn! Get your buck teeth fixed! Fuck! (sighs) I swear, we work out way more when we're oppressed. Marches, handing out pamphlets, running from bullies, sexual assaults. Sorry if I triggered you. I'm healing through it, too. We can talk about it after if you need. Yeah, I digress. What was I talking about? Sissy faggot! Bullies, yes. What you looking at, punk? Then there was Keith. He was the most burly of the three, but he was light-skinned, so people thought he was cute. Sad part is that I used to play at his house when we were younger, but now, every time he looked at me, he looked like someone had farted. I disgusted him that much. I wonder if he saw something in himself. I hate looking at you, you little sissy. 
Then there was... Um, shit. Let's call him Jason. Now this fool was real privileged. Light-skinned, only child, nice clothes. Mama drove him in a Cadillac, fluffy hair. So, yeah, they used to chase me home. All three of them. Third grade. I only lived across the street, but that run home really felt like a relay race. Well, one time I guess I ran home one too many times. That's enough! Why is your shirt torn? I was running. From who? From them. Those boys chased you home again, huh? Yeah. This has gone on long enough, damn it. Your auntie says you should go back outside and fight them. Fight them all together? No, dum-dum. One at a time. Your cousins and I will keep watch to make sure no one jumps in. But, Mom... You fight them, or you gonna fight me? I don't wanna fight you. I know you don't. So you gotta choose, then. Mom! Listen! You keep running from people like that, and you will be running for the rest of your damn life. Going out there, like I said, we won't let anything happen to you. I understand what she was trying to teach me, but I was more scared of my mom than them, that's for damn sure. And guess what? I won. Each horrible fucking time. I had to. You fight them, or are you gonna fight me? Oh, I hated her for listening to my aunt. For letting her think for her. I wasn't like the other kids, and she knew that. But... Terry, Keith, and whatever his name was, never bothered me again. That was the first time that I was forced to stop running and made to face my fears. But I would continue to run, like that little kid running home. But the fears were much worse than those fools. Run home like a little faggot. Run home like a little faggot. Run home like a little faggot! <laughs> Triggered? Wait then, there's more. After I got sober and made amends with my mom, somewhat, I got the courage to ask her, Why... Did you make me fight those bullies but continued to stay with Daryl? I thought I didn't have a choice. But I knew that you did. If we hadn't run then, he would have killed us. I know that in my heart. I'm glad you did, but it taught me in order to survive, I gotta run. That's not what I wanted you to learn from all that. I ran to protect my children. But we, uh... We did run, and I did make you stand and fight, and I'm not going to apologize for it, and I'm not going to apologize for it, and I'm not going to apologize for it, and I apologize for it. Wait, it gets better. The fear of my own transness, which ran so deep, led me to addiction, alcoholism, and homelessness. Yay! When I did decide to get sober, I got into this rehab place in Burbank, an all-men's facility. I had to put my drag to the side and concentrate on being sober, but I just want to run like my mother did. It's crazy how our heads tell us anything we want to hear to keep us running from ourselves. So there I was in rehab, going through withdrawal, and my mind all over the place. I was crawling the walls to get out and get fucking lit. When I tried to leave one of my roomies in rehab, Gus, a dude only there two months more than me, talked to me. <laughs> Homie, what is wrong with you this time? I don't want to be here anymore. I, I can't take it here with the meetings and the people and their drama. <laughs> and you had no drama when you were out there on the streets, right? 
I did just fine. You did, huh? Let me refresh your memory. You came in homeless and twacked out, hadn't eaten real food in weeks, and smelled of God knows what. But you were fine, right? I wasn't homeless. I was couch surfing. You know what I mean. <laughs> Dude, you can leave whenever you want to. Then I will. Go ahead. But ask yourself, will you be better off than you were before? I'll be away from all of this bullshit. <laughs> and go from one to another, hmm? I don't belong here. None of us do. But here we are, homie. So what are you gonna do, run? You have been here for only two months, and you are coming down from that shit you've been putting in your system for over ten fucking years. It wasn't that bad. Oh, no? Where you gonna go? Just stay. I can't do this. It's too hard. <laughs> you know, I've seen guys leave and never make it back, dog. What's waiting for you out there can kill a fool. For real. Just stay for another week, think about it. I need to go. Another day, okay? Listen. <sighs> if after a week you want to leave still, then I will buy you some Tina. And a bottle of whatever you want. Okay? I'll give it another week. But if it gets to be too much, I'm fucking gone. Okay. Cool. Let's go get some dinner. One more day. One more day. One more day. I ended up staying at that rehab for two years. If it wasn't for Gus that night, I would not be where I am today. Gus relapsed a month later, though. He came back to the house high and drunk one night and was kicked out, and I haven't seen him since. So, you see, I have been running from something all my life. Learning to face things hasn't been passed down in my family, along with trust, forgiveness, and inclusiveness. But there were some good parts passed down, though, like courage and laughter. As I've gotten older, I've learned that there's a time to run and a time to stay. My mother taught me to run, run from danger. But to face my fears, she made me fight. 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 For more information, reach out to the Los Angeles Centers for Alcohol and Drug Abuse. La Cada is a licensed and certified substance use and behavioral treatment provider by the Los Angeles Department of Public Health. Visit their website at www.lacada.com. That was Running For Myself by Sydney Rogers. Corey looks back on their life as a young person and their journey to becoming sober. Playing Corey was Alyssa Garcia. Playing mom was Coretta Sima Love Monk. Playing Terry slash Keith slash Gus was Angel Gabriel. Directed by Corey Saucier. Post producer and editor Edwin Alexis Gomez. Sound director and composer, Ricardo Licea. Artwork by Faye Hernandez. Produced by Abe Zapata Jr., Brandon English, and Anna Bernal. Hi, I'm Anna Bernal, executive director and founder of Youth Foundation. I wanted to give a special thanks to our listeners worldwide. And if you have enjoyed our ESQS series, please consider making a donation to Q-Youth. 
We are a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to building creative and brave spaces for the LGBTQIA community. Check out our website at www.qyouthfoundation.org to learn more about us and donate to support our programming. Thank you.